the Majestic 7 are getting pounded this morning as the Dow is in the green by a little bit. Are we seeing a continuation of the rotation out of tech and the Mag 7 into the broader market? This is what was happening for about 10 days in a row until late last week when it sort of reversed. But here we go again this morning, giving some evidence that this is going to be something material. I continue. I started talking about this three months ago when nobody else was. I mean, nobody else was talking about a rotation. I think that it's just natural and expected that we'll see this rotation. Tesla's down this morning, but it's outperforming the rest of the Meg 7 by a lot. Natural gas and Bitcoin got clobbered, are continuing to get clobbered this morning. Why is that? All right. In case you've been worried about the headlines that say Tesla and BEVs are failing and that China is a particularly weak part of the equation, we have the stats and the stats are looking quite good for your favorite car company and actually for China in general. In the meantime, the other U.S. makers continue to struggle, not to mention VW and the European makers are failing fast. If you didn't see Lars's talking in detail about the various European companies, in particular Volkswagen yesterday on Best in Tesla, it is well worth the listen. I'm going to do a semi rant at the end. And about this will be about Elon and about X and about Alex Jones and about the impact on Tesla and Tesla stock, which apparently this morning is zero. I'll do the regular news and financial news first. And those who are interested can say until after the normal coverage. Bottom line, I don't think any of it is going to matter in the long term. This is Randy Kirk. Please hit like. Please hit subscribe. Please hit notify. You've got Brian White coming around noon today. You've got Larry Goldberg helping with the best, the uh, good news on uh, Monday uh, at around 4.35 o'clock. So you got plenty to look forward to today. So be sure to hit notify so we can tell you and get, get you uh, lined up on that. Please Contribute to Patreon if you're getting any kind of value out of these daily programs. Three today, three a day, two on the weekends. Um, it, it's a lot of work and a lot of expense. And hopefully you'd like to just five bucks or 10 bucks would be great. And then, of course, we do have some cyber truck bottle openers for sale or something like that. All the information will be down below to help you uh, get those ordered in time for Christmas. Um, so let's see. We have Troy Test Light this morning saying, this quarter, Tesla sales in China are expected to clearly exceed U.S. sales for the first time. China sales were higher in quarter four of 2021 also, but only by about 697 vehicles. This time, the difference is expected to be about five to 10,000 units. However, it looks like this will change as we get into the cyber truck production. Tesorati says this morning, uh, continuing with the China story, Tesorati rankings released today by the China Passenger Car Association, revealed that Tesla's retail sales in China rose 4.8% year-on-year to 65,504 units in November. This is the local sales, okay? This was enough to give Tesla a 7.8% market share in the country's NEV sector. This is also enough to make Tesla into China's number two NEV maker behind BYD. Chinese automaker BYD cemented its leadership in the country's NEV sector in November with sales hitting 263,000 units for a dominant 31.3% market share. BYD's results mark a 20.9% increase for the company compared to the same period last year. It should be noted and should have been noted a lot earlier, but should be noted that BYD sells BEVs and PHEVs. So this is not an apples to apples if you're like me, you believe that hybrids will go the way of uh, ice cars eventually. But right now, there does seem to be a bridge. There is, seems to be a market uh, that the, uh, especially in China, but around the country, around the world, where these hybrids are having an impact. Then we got this one. Who's number three in China? Geely. Another Chinese automaker experienced an impressive 98.4% year-over-year surge in its NEV sales, reaching 63,000 units and a 7.6% market share in November, just for the month of November. This impressive performance pushed Geely to third place. All right. Looking at the January to November period, the trend is quite similar. BYD leads the NEV pack with an impressive 35% market share, staggering 2.4 million units sold in China. Tesla with 78% share and 
half a million units sold stands a distant second, as noted in the post. This is still a notable accomplishment for Tesla. However, especially since the Model 3 and Model Y crossovers are still marketed as premium vehicles in that country. Lucid Motors, meanwhile, will be delisted from the NASDAQ. I'm sorry to say that I missed this. The National Federation of Independent Business Small, uh, their Business Optimism Index, Small Business Optimism Index for November will be out on Tuesday. The source that I use failed to list that this month for some weird reason. So I, I didn't list that in the upcoming news that will be part of the Tuesday craziness tomorrow and the Wednesday craziness the next day. Anyway, from Axios. All right, this is very, very, very interesting news because, okay, we're going to be talking about the charging stations around the country where Tesla has this massive lead in terms of quality, in terms of units, and yeah, in terms of units that actually work. Um, and the lead just continues to grow. And then the Biden administration comes in and says, okay, well, the government will come in and support and create, and we'll do we'll do the job that uh, that the uh, the, um, uh, the the regular capital markets have not been willing to do. However, more than two years after President Biden signed legislation allocating five billion for a nation to as a uh, is sharing five billion in sharing, not a hundred percent of the expense. Uh, for a nationwide network of taxpayer-funded taxpayer electric vehicle charging stations, the first one finally opened Friday. The first one opened Friday in Ohio. <laughs> Having convenient, reliable, fast, fast chargers along major highways is an important confidence booster for people considering an electric car. Yes, we know this. And it's why we're having trouble in the United States with the rest of the car companies who did not participate in infrastructure buildup. But the government's effort to supply them is moving at a typical government speed, while the privately funded build-out of charging stations continues separately. The threat level, according to Axios, that slow pace is making it harder to achieve Biden's ultimate goal of EVs making up half of all new cars by 2030 um, and more than that by 2032. It'll be more than that. Okay, catching up fast. The 2021 infrastructure law included $5 billion to establish the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, the NEVI, N-E-V-I, administered by the Federal Highway Administration. You might have forgotten all about these acronyms and stuff because it's not been in the news. Because why? Nothing's happening. The intent was to give money to all 50 states to deploy fast chargers near federal highways designated as alternative fuel corridors. Once the highway charging structure is complete, states can use the remaining funds to deploy chargers elsewhere, where it stands. 26 states, not just barely over half of the states, have made an effort to spend their share of the money so far, according to the Biden administration's new joint office. Of those, 17 <laughs> are in the process of soliciting bids. Seven others have issued conditional awards for new stations worth $101 million. Ohio and Hawaii are the furthest along with firm contracts in place. Zoom in. The new Nevi funded station, which opened December 8th, is located in the Pilot Travel Center along the I-70 near Columbus, Ohio. It includes four, four, count them, four, <laughs> under, under an overhead canopy, plus access to restrooms, Wi-Fi, food, beverages, and other conveniences. It is the first of more than two dozen highway charging stations to open in Ohio by the end of 2024. This, this is, you can't make this stuff up. The state which will receive 100, never mind. Reality check. Ohio is an exception. Many other states are just getting started if they're moving at all between the lines. Bureaucratic challenges have slowed the charger rail out, rollout. The federal government, for example, had to staff the new, oh, that goes into all the details, what they had to do to even get into the, the beginning of this entire process. Uh, you know, I, I, I would read the whole thing, but I'm sorry, it just gets sadder and sadder. Yes, and Build America, Buy America provision of the law requires that charging equipment manufacturers move production lines from Asia to the U.S. <laughs> so while they're, what they're saying, Gabe Klein, executive director at the joint office, is satisfied with the pace of development. This is exactly the timeline that I was expecting, he told Axios. I think the states are doing a phenomenal job. <laughs> anyway, the big picture, the federally funded chargers are just a small slice of a much larger picture. Private companies have committed about $24 billion to expand charging in the U.S., Klein said. Yes. But the U.S. will need 28 million home and public charging ports to support 
even more charging locations in order to get the rollout to be ha happen. We have so many bottom lines in this article, I can't hardly keep track. The bottom line was 60,000 public chargers, including only 8,560 fast chargers. The country still has a long way to go. All right. That is the news and the financial news. Now I'm going to go into, I'm not I'm going to do this part first before I get into where the stock market is right now. I'm going to do my rant, okay? So what impact is politics having on the sale of Tesla vehicles? Will reinstating Alex Jones on X be just one more nail in the coffin for liberals who are the once the biggest supporters of Tesla? We can assume that Elon will continue his fight for free speech. It's going to happen. Will some people stop investing rather than be at the mercy of the unchecked moments of Elon Musk in the public arena? Well, in fact, the other day I said that Elon's go F yourself statement might be a call similar to give me liberty or give me death. Well, yesterday he doubled down on his spaces where he said the following as reported by Fortune. Elon Musk claims he would happily serve time behind bars if one of the arms of the U.S. government, such as the FBI, were to attempt to censor content on X, even though he called himself a law-abiding citizen whose corporate empire regularly follows countless rules and regulations. Well, he's a law-abiding citizen. Does that mean that he's going to allow the FBI to do something unlawful, like censor content on X? Come on, Fortune. Hey, 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 hey. If I think, if he quote, if this is Elon, if I think of government agencies breaking the law in their demands on the pl platform, I would be prepared to go to prison personally. He said on Sunday during a Spaces discussion that included Alex Jones, the Sandy Hook conspiracy theorist. And that whose whose uh, account has been instated. First, I have many friends on the Los Angeles West Side, and I can tell you that some which are who are liberals, and I will tell you that some of them are now concerned that the vehicle that they once purchased partially because it was going to be virtual signaling, now they're they're you know because of climate change and other things would be good for them in terms of virtual signaling are now concerned that their friends will see them as favoring Elon Musk. This is absolutely true. And this might also cause some, like some guy on X that we used to like, and many people now don't like him as well. Anyway, they might walk away. They might start to be so concerned that they are supporting free speech in America. I now live in Riverside, which is about equally split politically between Republicans and Democrats, but I go to church in a super conservative area. And I can tell you that many members are very wary of electric cars and electric electrification in general because they associate it with the government telling people what to do rather than letting the market decide. So, And of course, Elon Musk feels that way exactly. He says, I don't even want these government rebates and these government uh, efforts to help electric vehicles. Let the market decide. We will make a better product at a better price and people will buy it. So should Elon pander to either group? Is he? He's actually liberal in many of his political positions. He's conservative in others and libertarian in yet others. He's against the rebates, as I just mentioned. So how conservatives are looking at just the headlines and getting these negative impressions about Tesla. The liberals, for some reason, think that they should make a decision about whether to buy a car or not based on whether Elon favors free speech. On the other hand, in the US, if you want an EV, you just don't have any choice other than Tesla. <laughs> the, the other car companies have capitulated, they're going away. Certainly, if you spend a few minutes investigating and you want either a sedan or an SUV, and you want it to be electric, there's really no choice. This uh, might not be as true in 18 to 24 months, because we've got some, the South Koreans are coming and others are coming and building car companies, EV car charging companies in the US, I'm sorry, EV car companies in the US. But um, by that time, we'll have the Model 3 Plus in the United States. We'll have the Juniper, I'm sure. The Cybertruck will be in full production mo mode and the Gen 3 vehicles will be rolling out. So I think it's unlikely that there'll be any serious competition in the US until 2027 at the earliest. So I'm thrilled that Elon is taking a stand against woke and for freedom. X is becoming a platform that is taking down ESG and DEI and now the horrific leadership of what used to be our elite universities. 
These are huge wins. And the result is more and more members are an increasing view time on X. I think we, if we take the long view, we're going to win. Tesla investors, Tesla folks that believe in the mission. We're going to win on multiple levels, including the financial one, by being stockholders. Short term, yeah, it's risky being a stockholder. But if you look at this morning, it doesn't look like it's having any impact on the stock. Finally, I've watched this stock for a long time, and I've carefully analyzed the movement. It is much more tied. The movement of Tesla is almost exactly tied to the NASDAQ. There's a, it's a multiple of the NASDAQ. NASDAQ goes up, Tesla goes up more. NASDAQ goes down, Tesla goes down more, and it's almost always the same delta. All right. Doesn't have much to do with what Elon says. No matter what everybody, anybody or any, if anybody thinks, people are going to they're going to spend their money in an investment world based on the fundamentals of the business way more than what the owner says. Uh, finally, Elon Musk says, replying to four n four I four at four n four leases anyway. SpaceX and Tesla have noticed a meaningful degradation in the capability of U.S. college graduates over the past several years. Really hard to predict. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You think that maybe there would be a, a, a degradation in the quality of college gra graduates given the leadership? Okay. It's really hard to predict the uh, market action this morning. Um, folks are going to be looking to position themselves ahead of the CPI, the PPI, and the Fed. But let's go ahead and take a look at where the market action is right now. See if it's changed in the last 15 minutes as we've been talking about stuff. The Dow Jones continues to be up, but only by 0.04%. The NASDAQ continues to be down by 0.27%. We have the S&P down 0.03%. We have Tesla down point, almost 1%, down 0.83%. But the rest of the Magnificent Seven are down more roughly by about 2%. Let's go back and talk in terms of bucks. <laughs> All right. So the Dow Jones is down 24. The NASDAQ is down 39. I mean, sorry, the Dow Jones is up 24. NASDAQ down 39. S&P down at one. Tesla down $2. Apple and the rest down three, four, three, seven dollars for Meta, six dollars for Microsoft, seven dollars for NVIDIA. Uh, that, okay. And then the Kathy Woods are mixed, but generally down, but only fractionally, just a tiny, tiny bit. Again, I don't expect a lot of movement today in the indexes. Um, the, the Magnificent Seven are moving like this, I believe, because of the rotation, as I've mentioned multiple times. Um, and I think this rotation will continue, whereas the Kathy Woods are going to be affected more by, of course, the bonds. So let's go take a look at the bonds and the rest of the numbers here. We have got the bonds this morning. Um, so the 10 year is at 4.266. That would be still within my trading range of, of, uh, 4.11 to 4.1, let's call it to 4.4. So still staying in that trading range. Uh, it is up a little though this morning, which could be affecting the Kathy Woods being down a little bit this morning. Then let's go ahead and look at what's happening. The two month is unchanged this morning. The two year is up by about the same amount. So uh, we have a little bit, uh, the, the inversion is not affected very much this morning. All right, so let's go on with the rest of these things. The oil prices are down fractionally uh, like a penny, okay? Uh, but sitting at 71.20, so still in the trading range that I'm hoping for. But look at this, natural gas down 10% this morning, 10%. <laughs> okay, so what's going on? Natural gas reserves are loaded. There's so much natural gas. These prices now at two dollars and two dollars and uh, two two dollars and thirty cents roughly. These are almost five year lows, heading towards five year lows. So this is super interesting on the natural gas side. It's affecting oil, as I keep mentioning. People need to remember that oil prices are affected by natural gas prices. Okay, and then we've got gold down 11, almost breaking through 2,000 again. That's interesting. Copper down uh, one uh, over 1%. We have, um, we've got the Bitcoin down 2,000. 
at f- about 42,000. Now this could be profit taking. I mean, it, we had a huge run up. So I don't know enough about it. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. And as I mentioned, the Dow is uh, continuing up with the NASDAQ down. That continues to be the case. Let's go back now and take a look at uh, Tesla just for fun at uh, down $2. Where it kind of, where It's kind of doing this right now. And that's kind of what I expect for the rest of the day. Tesla could up in the, end up in the green because there's a lot of pressure pushing Tesla upward because of all the good news and all the fundamentals being so strong right now. So even if the Magnificent 7 doesn't even get in the green or the NASDAQ get in the green, I could see Tesla getting into the green on its own today. It is so far outperforming the rest. Okay, so I don't have a prop. I've lost my prop. Okay, I don't have a prop to show you. Um, my uh, <laughs> So if you haven't bought your your Cybertruck uh, bottle opener yet, you need to get going. Okay, we are on the 11th. That makes it 14 days. Uh, two weeks from today is Christmas. It is time to buy your Cybertruck. We, plenty of time to get there. If you're buying more than one, I'm sending it special uh, special handling anyway. So it's going to get there in a couple of three days. Um, so, uh, you know, I've got a bunch of them on the way, but I'm also selling a huge amount on um, on um, Amazon. If you want to buy it on Amazon, you can go do that too. But I'm selling a shocking number over the weekend on Amazon. Um, so that is depleting my resources. So I'm probably going to place, well, I did. Last night, I placed yet another order. Um, so those should get in in plenty of time for me to ship you by Christmas. Uh, $25 for one, $45 for two, $65 for three, $90 for four, $110 for five, uh, and uh, 210 for 10, $400 for 20. Um, all that information is down below in the description. You send it to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lowercase letters, and 20 bucks for export orders out of the U.S. Uh, zip code area. And then, uh, of course, mention camouflage or stainless steel. It'll save time and energy if you do that. Join Patreon if you'd like to get one for free. One last time, let's look at Tesla. It is now down $2.13. And again, outperforming the the rest of the Magnificent Seven. Uh, That's all I got. I will be seeing you a couple times later today. Be sure and tune in to see uh, Brian at uh, the lunch hour and Larry uh, helping us understand what happened today in the markets on Good News Monday. Been great talking to you.